Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watch in South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of September. President of Bharat on G20 dinner invites triggers row. IMF rejects Pakistan's tariff adjustment plan amid inflation woes. And UNDP says over half of Sri Lanka's population vulnerable after economic crisis. And now for all the details. A political battle has triggered between Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led government and the opposition parties after an invite for G20 dinner by the presidential palace addressed the head of state as President of Bharat instead of the customary President of India. Taking exception of the invite, opposition Congress leader Jairam Ramesh hit out at the government and called the adoption of Bharat in official document as an attempt to distort history. Reacting sharply to the accusation, BJP President G.P. Nadda questioned Congress over their objection of usage of Bharat and accused the opposition of not respecting the constitutional institutions. We didn't know that the people of Bhajpa were so weak. They were so weak. They were so weak. Now, there are a few weeks in India. They have been made in the name of India. And you have to start to play. They are sending an invitation. The Republic of India is the Republic of Bharat. Article 1. में बड़ा क्लियर पोजीशन है इंडिया दैट इज भारत और अगर आप हमारे हमसे डर करके इस गठबंधन से डर करके तो उसकी टैगलाइन पढ़ लीजिएगा नीचे इंडिया के नीचे टैगलाइन है जुड़ेगा भारत जीतेगा इंडिया नहीं करूंगा लेकिन देखिए मुझे नहीं मालूम उनको क्या एतराज है मैं एक भारतवासी हूं मेरा देश का नाम पहले भी भारत था आज भी भारत है और कल भी भारत रहेगा इसमें कांग्रेस को क्या प्रॉब्लम है मुझे नहीं मालूम वो ही बताए और अगर प्रॉब्लम है उसका इलाज वही ढूंढे लेकिन वेल अंडर द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द कंट्री इज रेफर्ड एज इंडिया दैट इज भारत द मूव हैज ट्रिगर डिबेट एंड स्पेक्यूलेशन दैट अ प्रपोजल मे बी ब्रॉड ड्यूरिंग द अपकमिंग स्पेशल सेशन ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट to simply refer the country as Bharat. The agenda for the session is, however, not been released yet. Moving on, security forces on Monday night neutralized a terrorist in Riyazi district of India's Jammu and Kashmir after an input was received regarding presence of two terrorists in the region. According to a statement by the Jammu and Kashmir police, two security officials also sustained injuries during the encounter. Search operations were still underway on Tuesday to find the second terrorist till the last reports came in. India accuses Pakistan aids terrorists to spread unrest in the Kashmir Valley. However, Islamabad denies the charge. And as Pakistan continues to face economic challenges, the IMF has made it tougher for the country to manage by rejecting the proposal for any tariff adjustment or provision of additional subsidy, local media reports have suggested. There has been growing public unrest over inflated electricity bills with massive protests in recent days in major cities. The country's inflation rate stayed above target at 27.4% in August as reforms set out as conditions for an IMF loan complicated the task of keeping price pressures and declines in its rupee currency in check. Ordinary Pakistanis say they are struggling to make ends meet. Meanwhile, a series of protests have erupted in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir against soaring inflation that has made survival of the poor extremely difficult. Locals say they are bearing the brunt of Pakistan's failed economic policies. A report. Massive protests have erupted in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir against record high inflation that has shaken domestic budgets of the common public. In a demonstration held in Muzaffarabad, protesters lamented Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. The fuel prices have already exceeded rupees 300 mark and soon this will further impact the prices of food and other essentials. आज में भी इजाफा चुका है। लोग महंगाई से, बेरोजगारी से, खुदकुशी कर रहे हैं। हम ये मतलबा करते हैं कि कोमोद आजाद कश्मीर, मुजफ्फराबाद आजाद कश्मीर के अंदर जो मशहूर तौर पर जो शिया की किल्लत पैदा की जा रही है, उस पर काबू पाए और लोगों को फौरी तौर पर रिलीफ भेजा करें। 
Locals lament instead of providing any aid to the people in the backward region. Economic losses faced by Pakistan are also being compensated from territories under its illegal control. <laughs> Well, the Taliban has rejected reports of their interference in distribution of humanitarian aid in the country and said that aid organizations have reduced their aid due to lack of funds, the Tolo News reported on Monday. The Security Council report in a publication made earlier last week had claimed the policies and practices by the de facto authorities of Afghanistan have complicated efforts to humanitarian crisis in the country. Taliban in response has said they do not interfere in affairs of any institution and call them to continue their operations and not consider political issues. The claim comes in the backdrop of a Taliban ban on Afghan women who have been prohibited to work for international NGOs. The economic crisis in Sri Lanka last year has left more than half of the island nation's population multidimensionally vulnerable, according to a survey led by UNDP, the United Nations Development Programme. In effect, the study showed that 12.34 million people have been badly affected by the crisis and are vulnerable across dimensions, including education, health and disaster and living standards. It states focused interventions such as reducing indebtedness or enhancing disaster preparedness are vital to build resilience. This comes amid claims of a recovering economy by government officials while challenges remain, including ongoing negotiations with external creditors. And St. Teresa was remembered on a 26th death anniversary by members of the Missionaries of Charity in India's Kolkata city. Popularly referred as Mother, St. Teresa is known globally for her extraordinary love and service for the poor, the homeless and the diseased. Missionaries of Charity, the global order of nuns founded by St. Teresa in India's Kolkata city offered prayers on Tuesday to mark her 26th death anniversary. Sisters of the mother's house where the ethnic Albanian nun lived and died at the age of 87 sang hymns and lit candles near the altruistic saint's tomb. Mother Teresa was popularly known as the Saint of the Gutter for her extraordinary love and dedication for the poor, the homeless and the diseased, which propelled her to an iconic status globally. And if we remember our teachers today, it's because of their care, of their tender love, of their guidance, of their instruction, of showing us the right direction in life. And this is why we remember our teachers. Mother Teresa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her social work. She was canonized by the Roman Catholic Church in 2016, just 19 years after her death. However, she is still addressed as Mother Teresa as she was known before her canonization by her followers. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.